So you're thinking about running, but not sure how to take the first step. My name's Brian Patterson, and I'm here to help. Well, welcome back to Brian's Ron Pod with me, Brian Patterson, and I hope the last episode gave you a bit of a flavour of what's to come in this podcast. Today, as promised, we're going to be talking about different aspects of running. The subject of our podcast today is the warm-up. Now, according to Runtastic.com, who might I add are not a sponsor of the show, they list the following as the main benefits of running. Or warming up, rather. So what are the main benefits of warming up? It raises your body temperature, number one. Two, it enhances muscle performance. Three, it boosts heart function. Four, it improves load distribution in the joints. Five, it helps prevent injuries. And six, it increases coordination and control. Now, we can just go through each of these individually. Raises your body temperature, Dynamic warm-ups before workouts raise your body temperature by heating up your muscles. They also boost your metabolism and accelerate the supply of energy to your muscles. Enhance muscle performance. As your muscle temperature rises, your muscle viscosity, or resistance, decreases. This results in faster muscle contraction and relaxation, which enhances your performance. It also boosts your heart function. Your heart also benefits from warming up. The exercises increases your cardio output and respiratory minute volume. And it also improves the load distribution to the joints. So contrary to popular belief, new research has shown that even short-term exercise like warming up can help build joint cartilage. The thicker the layer of cartilage increases the load-bearing surface and distributes loads even more, is more evenly, seeing as that running is a high-impact sport. It's important that you do get that um, load distribution within the joints evenly. It also helps prevent injuries, so warming up properly has been proven to minimise the risk of injury and increases tissue and muscle flexibility. Also, last but not least, it increases the coordination and control and has the added advantage of warming up. Warming up improves your mental focus and speeds up your reaction time. Now, I know that we probably want to get out the door and get on with doing your running, so let's not be too impatient. The important thing on this journey is to make this new hobby sustainable. It is much as a Success when you say that you have run, let's say, two to three or even four times a week uh, for six weeks. Um, Your goals don't have to be about losing weight or having a better cardiovascular function. It could be just being able to um, have much more regular exercise um, and be at two, as I said, two or even three or, or four times a week. How should I warm up? Well, stretching used to be part of every warm-up and cool-down, but evidence doesn't fit. find that, um, that this benefits, um, the benefits of, of stretching um, is best for warming up. So static stretching before, during, or immediately after exercise hasn't been proven to prevent injury or, or uh, delayed onset of muscle soreness or what's known in the trade as DOMS. So tips for warming up. So now we have gone over the whys and wherefores for warming up. What are the tips for warming up? Well, um, it's best that you have enough sleep um, before you do any exercise. So before doing any exercise after a long day, it's important that you've had enough sleep. Remember, um, in my previous episode, I may have mentioned that sufficient sleep today is like investing in tomorrow. Also, it means you are likely to complete the warm-up properly. Prepare 
playlist in advance. Sometimes having different music to listen to can help spice up your warm-up. Or even better still, have a playlist just for warming up and then another for the run. Some streaming services do specify running playlists, but uh, like Spotify or Apple Music, um, but the music uh, might not be to your taste. Never start with sprints. Use gradual mov- movements initially and then gradually increase, we will then gradually increase your heart rate. Get your mind prepared. Think about what you're about to do. Start off slowly, maybe gauge whether this is a good time of day for you. Some people are morning people and some like to do exercise in the evening. I remember 10 years ago or longer, I think I thought of nothing of doing 10 to 15k run around 6 in the morning. Nowadays, I just can't do that. I do find now that I'm better mentally at getting myself out the door after work. It's like over time, my motivation has shifted throughout the day. Before I get on to exercise, make sure you have all your tech, keys and proper running gear with you. If you're planning to go out first thing in the morning, then make sure you have the kit laid out as you don't want to be ruffling through drawers first thing in the morning as this might wake up other members of the household. So as I said, make sure you get enough sleep. A, B, prepare a good playlist in advance um, for your warm up. C, never start with sprints. D, get your mind prepared. And E, before I um, get onto the exercise, just make sure you've got everything prepared. You know, all your, your tech, your keys, your running gear, everything. So, warming up. So, you're ready for the warm up. I've got all our gear on. What are we going to do? So, how am I going to go about doing it? A, let's, um, <clears throat> let's, let's start with doing gradual hip movements, moving your legs out to the side making a circular motion with your legs and this will help improve the flexibility of your hips and gait. So your gait is how your legs and running, how you're running. If ever you wanted a little bit more of a explanation, either look up on YouTube or look up on the web about your, about your gait. Um, some people have, uh, everyone has a different gait. It's something that when you go and buy your running shoes in a local running store, they'll explain to you um, about how you are in terms of your impact on your shoes, but also your running gait. So um, anyway, do some research about that. Um, leg swings. Lean to the, lean onto a wall and swing one leg from one side and then into the middle. Just an aside, there was an old comedian whose name, I think his name was Harry Worth, who had a television programme on the on the BBC and part of his intro was to go to the corner of a shop window where the glass meets at right angles and then put his arm and leg out to the side. This gave him the illusion of him having both arms and legs out. Anyway, I thought this was hilarious at the time. So anyway, you could always look it up on YouTube. Heel kick. On the spot, do you heel butt kicks? So this is a quick action that will get your heart rate heart rate going. Basically, you're going to try to kick kick your bottom with your heel. D, forward lunges. If you can do forward lunges, so take one leg forward and bend your knee so you're lunging forward. Then again, the same with the other knee. So do these a few times. Now you should start to notice that your heart rate is beginning to rise. E, now you may have noticed we have not included any static stretches at this stage, but now when I mean a static stretch, I mean standing still and performing a stretch from one part of the body, be it head, arms or legs. I think the idea nowadays is to improve more dynamic movements to get your body ready for the exercise, get your blood to flow at all parts of the body. And F, how long should I warm up? This is really dependent on how long your run's going to be. I would say, let's say if you're just doing a 5K, maybe do a 10-minute warm-up. If you're doing a 10K, maybe do 5 to 10 minutes. So, um, again, it's really key that you do uh, at least um, more than just like two or three minutes. Do at least between 5 to 10 minutes and uh, as a good feeling that you've you've warmed up sufficiently 
even you could be sweating a little bit. And then off we go. Next thing is how do how do we know that um, I've warmed up? If you break into sweat, you can pretty much pretty be sure that you're properly warmed up. However, always make sure to take into account the air temperature, humidity, intensity of warm up into consideration. Unfortunately, that no one plan fits all approach to warm up. So, if you're if the above exercises warm up exercises aren't for you, um, and it just doesn't you know uh, feeling a bit cold inside so as it were then try using resistance bands again look up on youtube and seeing how other people are using resistance bands to warm up um uh or maybe you look up other um uh how other people are doing it in terms of warming up so anyway moving on how is my training going well I have told you that from the beginning of this podcast, but part of this podcast is about my journey, um, doing a 10 week, 12 week schedule, 10, 10 K schedule. Um, this week has been quite intense. I've been doing tempo runs again, something I'll cover in the uh, future episodes, which, um, and also I've been doing some interval training, um, and then finishing off the week with a relaxed three K run. At the end of the week, I was beginning to feel quite tired, so I was not really looking forward to my 10k on the sun Saturday. But anyhow, I thought, you know, mind of a matter, um, I'll go down, I'll, I'll, I'll do it, um, and I'm sure I'll get get used to the sort of the negative feelings about doing the particular run. Um, so warmed up, started my playlist, began my run, and 4k into the run. I was just not feeling the love for it. Uh, still feeling tired and just trying to think of things to help me relax and get me into the run. Then, unfortunately, the doubt started creeping in. And then once the doubts start creeping in, it's like, oh, shall I just do one more kilometre and call it a day or another one? So, unfortunately, I stopped at six kilometres. But I had a thought to myself then, you know, I had done 20K um, throughout the week, which I thought was pretty good. And although I may not have accomplished my goal in terms of doing 10K for that particular day on my long run, I um, <clears throat> I uh, thought, well, still maybe... It's the body's telling me to kind of slow down and to take a rest. So um, we have to remember that we're not professional athletes and we don't have the privilege of training in the morning and having a rest and training in the afternoon. We don't have the rest and we don't have a professional coach. So most of us have jobs that are either demanding or stressful. So by missing out on your training goal or a, a week in our schedule, it's okay. Your body is the best judge of how your training is going to be. So by taking the rest, um, it will just help re-energize my mind and body. And it, that is just as important part of your running, um, having a rest as doing the exercise itself. So um, uh, as I said, I've it's, look at some of um, what other people are doing in terms of the warm up, just to recap, look at what the people are doing in the warm up. Make sure you're listening to your body in terms of if it's making, if you're feeling tired after maybe doing um, three or four runs and you're just not uh, feeling enthused or motivated to do your next run, just take a couple of days off, but make sure you do get back into it. So, um, anyway, it's that uh, time of the week where where it is the tip of the week. Now, 
this tip of the week is for Apple Watch users. Now, thinking about it, this could be applied to Google wearables or even Garmin watches. It's really important that you keep your running tech up to date. So on the Apple Watch, you can go to the Apple Watch app on your iPhone and go to general software update, and this will check if there are any updates for the watch. If there are, then it is really vitally important um, you 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 take it off your wrist, place it onto a charger, and then proceed with the update. Um, now, at the time of r- recording, we are on Watch OS nine point one, so this will uh, this OS will only apply to Apple Watch four and above. Another tip, make sure you have enough space for your for your update. I know that the Apple Watch 4 may be, um, there may be limitations on space, so you may have to either take songs off or even pictures and then reload them up again. But um, I know I had an issue with my Apple Watch 3 when I was doing updates, that kind of thing. I'm not sure whether it's the same. Uh, you run into the same problems with the Apple Watch 4, but I'm, I'm sure the space has increased. But um, also, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's important that your phone is updated anyway, security updates, um, and, and also because the uh, Apple Watch and the iPhone do sort of work in unison, uh, you, you, you may... Uh, find that if one's updated and the other one isn't, then there may be sort of like um, it, it, it may not sort of f- the functionality of the of the of the watch may not work. So anyway, that's tip of the week. Pretty basic, I know, but we do get sort of caught out every so often. Anyway, that's it this week. Um, we'll be covering a lot more in next week's um, episode of Brian's Rompod. Uh, Thanks very much for listening and have a great week, have a great runs and look forward to seeing you next week. Bye. 